I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, all of you have uh, received a copy of the uh, minutes of the May meeting, and I think, I'm sure you had a chance to, uh, to review it. Are there any uh, changes, additions, or deletions to the minutes? I, I think John is doing a, a marvelous job well, capturing <laughs> what's going on. Well, of course, you folks are giving me crib sheets, and that helps. <laughs> okay. Help. There being uh, no changes, uh, a motion. Uh, I move there, approval. I move the minutes are approved. There's no vote required if there's no changes. Are there any uh, revisions uh, to the agenda? Any additions, deletions, and so forth? If not, we'll go forward. Um, our uh, township liaison, Carl Bletcher, is not here this evening. I expect him shortly for his report. If he shows up, we'll, he will he will interrupt and, and bring it in. Bring him in. Bert, could you tell us what's going on with the uh, uh, conservancy? Since our last meeting, the Grosville Nature and Land Conservancy had several events. Um, we had frog survey on May 10th. May 18th was a GLOBE study, which was led by Jeff Bauman, who is a Grozio resident and Michigan Science Teacher of the Year. And that was, and GLOBE is a NASA program that stands for Global Observations to Benefit the Environment. And that program was about mosquito larvae. And it's been such a cold spring that even though it was uh, planned for the end of May, there were no mosquito larvae at all. So we did learn about the, the program and how it's done. Um, we studied some pond water and saw some damselfly larvae. So we know how to do that, and we can do it amongst ourselves and, you know, and carry that on. That's something that um, Jeff does with his class. And there'll be another GLOBE program with Jeff scheduled for the fall. And then we also had migrants on the move on um, May 19th about migratory birds. So that was what we've done recently, and then coming up this Sunday is a, a program focusing on kids about exploring wetlands and learning about how wetlands are important to the ecosystem and to all of us. And that'll be at 1 o'clock at the Gibraltar Bay Unit. And that's about it. Thank you very much, Bert. Uh, Kyle is not here tonight either, so uh, we'll dispense with the uh, recreation report. Uh, just as a matter of information, if I may stop here, is that uh, <clears throat> the Open Space Committee has made it a point over the years that there are many other groups uh, and activities and committees on the island that interface with or have mutual issues uh, with the open space program and vice versa. So that's why we take a very strong effort to ensure that we have good communication between the Open Space Committee and all our other related acti activities. So having said that, I introduce Pam Frucci, who will talk about the Beautification Committee. Um, we had some plannings in time for the Island Fest. Uh, we planted the Navy sign there at Agro and Meridian with red, white, and blue petunias in time for the Island Fest. And then uh, to brighten up the four corners, we've planted zinnias at the um, at four corners. And um, Brian Medved, our chair, has planted uh, pl uh, flowering, colorful plants at the entrance sign as you come onto the island. And we have a dead spruce at one of the corners that we have to replace. So that's on our 
uh, agenda for replacing a spruce that didn't make it through the winter. And that's it. Hey, thank you very much, Pam. And now we have Linda Worsley, who is uh, making her last uh, uh, report as um, the liaison to the Gross Hill School System. So, Linda, I think you have some um, young ladies that you would like to introduce, and uh, along with uh, any information reports that you may have. Yes, the only information that I have to report is that this is my last meeting and the people that will be taking my place are Emma Griffin and Emma Cornell. Um, they'll do a great job. Okay, uh, Emma Griffin, come on up and tell us a little bit about yourself. My name's Emma. Um, I've been in environmental for about a year now. Uh, it's just something that I wanted to learn more about and see if that's possibly a career path for me. Um, I'm a sophomore entering my junior year in the fall. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Emma. Emma? Um, I am a, currently a junior, and I am going into my senior year next year. And we are co-presidents, and I'm very excited to be on this club for next year, well, I'm on it this year, but to be a leader of this club next year because I want to get the school more involved with the community and the environment, and yeah. Thank you very much. Emma, may we have a spelling of your last name, please? Yes, um, K-R-O-N-E-L-L. -L. Yeah. Well, we really look forward to having you as uh, the liaisons <laughs> from the uh, Gross Hill School System. Again, that'll be start. Our next meeting will be in September. It's the first Tuesday of every month. And if there's anything that it, you need us to do in relationship to the to the Grosiel Schools, uh, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, we'll make sure that both of you have the copies of the of the minutes, and I'll be giving you the uh, names and addresses of all the people on our committee. So again, thank you very much for volunteering and uh, welcome aboard. Okay. Cliff, could I ask, uh, are you girls going to alternate or are you both going to sit in the seat for the high school liaison? I think we're going to do yeah. yeah. If one can't show up, the other one oh, will. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And they're both Emma's. <laughs> Yes, which means that we have absolutely no problem in remembering their first name, right? <laughs> well, ladies, thank you very much for volunteering, and welcome aboard. Next, uh, Dan. Dan uh, really um, jumped from the from the frying pan into the fire when he uh, volunteered to uh, chair the. Uh, uh, dump the junk program, which I think was a very huge success. So, Dan, could you regale us with the? Uh, well, before we go on to that, Cliff, let's talk about BPAC. Okay. BPAC's got a lot of stuff going on right now. All right. As most of you travel down Grosseil Parkway and you approach Jefferson, you're going to see the connection between West Jefferson and Elizabeth Park. It's, we had the dedication Saturday for the West Jefferson Trail dedication. Joanne Gagne from the city of Trenton has been working on this project for quite some time. In fact, there was some chit chat that it was about 20 years in the making. We had uh, Susan White from the refuge manager, um, Wayne County Parks, Alicia Bradford, DT and E, we had Jennifer Whitaker, Tom Woolwide, if I pronounced that wrong, I apologize, Tom. Why Woody? Why Woody? Thank you. He um, is from southeastern Michigan, part of the Ralph Wilson Jr. Foundation. And um, Nikki Van Bloom, uh, she was from the DNR. It was a Quite a few people showed up, and it's a great dedication, and uh, you're going to see more coming with the refuge also. Currently, BPAC is working on a study with the residents along Grosseville Parkway to connect Grosseville Parkway and Meridian to the Wayne County Bridge. 
Um, we're also looking for some volunteers to work at the Trenton Summer Festival in our booth, whether it's open space greenways or BPAC. The other thing that we're talking about is, don't forget this coming Thursday, Glow Ride begins. We're gonna start out at Tasty Freeze at 7.30 p.m. and it'll probably run to around nine. Please have some bike lights on your bikes. It's gonna be a fun event. That's it. That's for BPAC. You know, if you want me to go in and dump your junk, I can go right into that. Well, we, we can. Uh, this is, at this part of the meeting, we usually have uh, people that come up from the audience uh, who might have some comments, uh, maybe complaints or issues that they, they need to talk about, but uh, uh, we don't have anybody, uh, no residents from the, except for the two young ladies who are here. So, uh, Dan? Go ahead. Okay, dump your junk. Wow, what an event that was this past May 11th. We had 500 vehicles enter the DPW yard with their treasures to be unloaded, and that doesn't count the people that came in looking for treasures. They were walk-ins. They also came back with their vehicles to haul away their most treasured treasures that they found. We also filled... 14 30-yard dumpsters, which is just unbelievable on how successful it was. I'd also like to thank Hungry Howie's for donating pizzas to our volunteers. We had 20-plus volunteers devote their time that Saturday to help us with this event. I also want to thank Kroger for furnishing the beverages that the volunteers got to consume during their hard work. It was a great day. A good time was had by all. Um, we're looking at some changes for next year. Uh, one of the things, it was very disheartening to me to see all these beautiful treasures go into dumpsters at the end of the day because nobody picked them up. So I'm looking into, if I'm still doing this next year, to possibly get a uh, St. Vincent de Paul, Salvation Army, or one of these charitable institutions to come out and pick up these treasures, as I call them, because they were. Um, one person rode a riding lawnmower in, and that thing was gone in minutes. Um, another person brought in an outboard motor, and that was gone in minutes. So th it was a fun afternoon. Uh, the weather cooperated, and I just want to say again, thank you to all the volunteers. And thank you, Dan. I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, and I, I commend Dan very highly for organizing a, a great Dump the Junk. I just want to say that I agree that it really is really bad to see good stuff going into the dumpsters at the end of the day. And it's been my understanding that uh, we've tried in the past to either coordinate with St. James with the rummage sale or something, um, and I don't think we've ever been able to get any of these collection agencies like Salvation Army or St. Vincent de Paul to come out on a weekend to do that and there's no place to store stuff and there's no way to keep it from getting to get the stuff protected from rain and stuff so my suggestion if we cannot solve that is that we just really tell residents that you need to take your treasures to St. James which is always ahead of dump the junk and um, have that, you know, just have that rummage beyond your mind. You know, there's always been the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, and just add rummage to be four R's. Or else take it to the Salvation Army or Goodwill or something on your own. But don't, if we can't find good homes or a way to solve it, I just hate to see stuff going in the trash as well. So that's those. That's my two cents. One of the nice things was um, there was a couple that brought in a full dining room set that they used three times. the The wife didn't particularly care for it, so it was gone. So there's a lot of valuable stuff that was brought in, and I'm a firm believer is in that you don't say it can't be done. We're going to find a way where it will be done. So next year, some of these beautiful treasures are, like it's been said, 
tossed in a dumpster. I mean, it was sad at the end of the day when everybody was gone and I was watching DPW throw this stuff in dumpsters. I mean, it was disheartening to me. And I think we need to do a better job of taking care of some of this stuff because there's a lot of people out there that can use it, whether it's a homeless shelter or whatever. I think there's something that may be, and just <laughs> why you were talking about this important issue, one of the things we might want to do be, before the actual event, uh, talk to the folks at the DPW and uh, make an arrangement whereby we could find a way to store the treasures and have uh, St. Vincent de Paul, the Salvation Army, or whatever, come in Monday or Tuesday of the following week and, and take it. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that there's, there's something that can be done to correct that problem. I am going to spend the best part of the coming year to find a way to solve it because I just saw so many nice pieces of furniture that people could have used. Maybe not everyone on the island is in need for some of this stuff, but we're a community in itself, and I think we need to do a better job of helping other people too. Well, that's that's a very that's a very good point, and that's something that we should work on for next year. I will. Thank you, okay. Cliff. I'd like to go on record as agreeing with everything Bert and Dan both said. Okay. Strongly supporting them. I think as long as we do this planning ahead of time, like you're talking about, Dan, we can get it solved and not not be faced with, you know, a crisis at the at the very end. I agree. And again, I'd really like to thank the 20 plus volunteers who gave it their all. And um, I think um, a special thank you to them should go out to the community itself. I mean, it was just. Unbelievable, set, set, steady stream of cars coming in that just showed one couple, they said it was their 10th trip. I mean, can you imagine that? 10 trips? What would, what, would, what would have happened to all this stuff if we didn't have this program? I mean, would it be in our side of the road somewhere? I don't know. Well, that's the, that's the reason why we started it. I think it was well over 10 years ago where... We did have a problem with uh, people uh, uh, dumping some of their uh, their stuff in the open space. That's the way it got started, and uh, it's been a huge success just for that one reason: that uh, the people have uh, uh, the, the condition of the open space is is a lot better today than it was 10 or 15 years ago. In Cliff, yes, I have a testimony too. Uh, we're in the we were in the process of moving, and it was so timely to have dump the junk and find the treasure at the same time. And uh, Daryl uh, uh, and um, Bill Heil came over and made two trips from our place to the dump the junk. We contributed some to find the treasure, but it was good that uh, both uh, the t the timing was terrific for at least our family. And um, I wrote an article for The Grand with some of Dan's statistics about the number of people that use it. And um, uh, it was, and then also I commented that he's the first organizer that has gotten uh, food for the workers. So that was a nice touch, thanks to Dan. Great. Thank you. you need to thank the community, uh, Hungry Howies and Kroger. I mean, all I did was just ask, simple, can you help us? So they did a b big part, and everybody enjoyed the pizza, and they enjoyed the refreshments. Job well done. Thank you. The next issue is the uh, nature guide, and uh, Bert, could you kind of give us an update of where we stand? Give us a little better background with the, with what the guide is, and uh, also where we stand on getting it updated. Okay, first I want to add to my report about what I forgot, which was um, Island Fest. The Conservancy participated in the parade, and we had a booth, and um, and. In our booth, we featured the winners of the 
2018-2019 high school photo contest. And then those winners' pictures will also be at the Trenton Library and the Wyandotte Library this fall. So Good. that's something else that we're doing. And then the next photo contest starts in October. So, so this will be the third iteration of the Natural Areas Guide, I think, right? Yes. We did one in 2015, and um, now we're updating it again. I put in a lot of time on getting this put together, and it's just about almost ready to go to the printer. Um, so it covers open space, conservancy properties, the state-owned islands, Stony and Celeron, and the federal units of the Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge, which is the Gibraltar Bay unit, Calf Island, and Sugar Island, and the bike paths, so just the official bike path. So we're going to try and put all this together, and it'll be in a 16-page brochure coming soon to Kroger and other locations on the island. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as the rec we recently, as far as background is concerned, we purchased uh, an additional lot on Ferry Road to uh, provide a connection of the ferry trail, which runs from Stout, and a dead end at uh, in the middle of the open space due to uh, some uh, building construction that was taking place on some private property just to the south. So we bought the, we bought a piece of property, and uh, uh, we have uh, entered into a contract with a, uh, a a company to complete that trail. And the only thing that we're waiting for now is the final sign off. There's some uh, technical letters that have to be signed. Um, I was hoping that Carl could be here tonight to give us the final report. I will personally follow up with Dale Ream tomorrow morning to find out when we can get uh, the contractor started on uh, constructing that particular trail. The, the contractor has been approved and he's ready to go at a moment's notice. The only problem that we've been having, of course, is this hellacious weather. Uh, the uh, it's wet. He might have to some extra time may be involved, but uh, uh, we're going to try to have this trail completed this summer in time for school when it starts. We'll try to make that commitment to you, and I'm going to do my best to. Uh, nudge and to push and to shove if necessary the, the final approvals so that uh, uh, the contractor can get in there and start constructing the end of that trail. And that's a commitment that I'll make to you tonight. The next item is the uh, we're thinking of beginning some work on a um, uh, on a trail extension uh, in, uh, in call it used to be Manchester Woods. We're now going to call it Meridian Woods. Is that correct, uh, yes. John? Yes. Uh, Meridian Woods. Uh, so we'll be working on that area. That that area. But first of all, we're going to hold off on that until we get the ferry trail underway. We do have. Uh, oh, some, uh, an, uh, an opening for a uh, another member for the open space uh, uh, committee. There are seven openings, and I think we have six members at the present time, plus the uh, 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 the liaison. So, if any residents out there are interested, by all means, uh, drop down to the township office, and there's a form to fill out. Uh, as far as an opening, it's, uh, in other words, application, uh, you will be interviewed, and then the candidate will be uh, selected. So we're still looking for volunteers. Uh, the next item is the uh, 
has selected the date for a millage proposal for open space maintenance. As far as uh, communication is concerned, uh, we did have a open space millage that was assessed to the community for about a quarter of a mill. We had close to $500,000 in that fund and we let it expire about 10, 12 years ago. And as of right now, we have about $250,000 left in that fund. And we're spending about thirty dollars to $50,000 a year to maintain the open space properties. So within the next year, uh, I've asked Carl uh, Bletcher to uh, begin talking to the township board uh, to select a date for a renewal or an, uh, a new uh, millage to be put on the ballot for open space maintenance. It'll be about, we're thinking of about a tenth of a mill, which is a, a minimal amount. So uh, we want to do this before we get into a panic uh, situation whereby we're running out of money and uh, uh, we don't. We need work that has to be done. But we want to take the proactive action to have this millage proposal on the ballot and hopefully approved by the voters. Um, so at this time, I'd like to open up. To start down at the left-hand side. Uh, any comments or questions? No, go ahead. I've already made my comment. Okay. I'm and fine. No comment. Linda? Nope. Are you sure? This is your last chance now. I'll miss you guys. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> so, Linda, well. why don't you tell us your plans? Okay. Um, I will be attending Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Um, I'm moving into my own apartment on August 23rd. Um, I'm majoring in epidemiology. I'm not sure exactly what career path I'm going to go on yet, but I'm very excited. And my graduation party is August 23rd, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and you're all invited if you want to come. Um, but, yeah, if you have any questions for me, I will we'll answer them. Well, Linda, it's been a pleasure having you. We certainly appreciate uh, the involvement and the, your dedication to volunteer for as a liaison from the Gross Hill Schools. And uh, we wish you all the best of luck in your career. Thank you. I appreciate that. Best of luck. Dan? Uh, no comment. Sure really? <laughs> Bert. Okay. I have nothing. Uh, again, uh, this is a reminder, we will not be meeting in uh, <clears throat> July or August. However, that doesn't preclude us. If there's something that comes up, I will make sure it get, gets into the email and gets onto the uh, uh, Gross Hill uh, website. Again, the two things that I'm really interested in is getting the uh, ferry trail complete and constructed as quickly as possible and to begin the work on the uh, uh, millage proposal so that we can continue to uh, maintain our open spaces. That was our shortest meeting yet. Yes, it was. <laughs> so with that, uh, anybody have a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>